understand. Honorable Chairman, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of the State Legislature, it is a great privilege and honor for me to address this joint session of both houses of Andhra Pradesh State Legislature on the occasion of the budget session 2022-23. Our nation our state have gone through a difficult phase in the last two years due to COVID-19 pandemic, being alert to the fact that the pandemic is not over. We all need to be cognizant of a possible recurrence of this menace. Bifurcation of the United States, fibers of police paralysis during 2014 to 19, a year of economic downturn during 2019-20, and two subsequent years of COVID-19 pandemic have severely impacted the state finance. My government's steadfast commitment of extending support to welfare of farmers, women, underprivileged, marginalized, and vulnerable groups has ensured that even during this excruciating difficult times, rural consumption and spending and the economy as a whole does not take a nose dive. I am proud to say that owing to the impactful interventions of my government, the state has demonstrated real GSTP growth of 0 to 22 percent in the financial year 2020-21 and as against this, the country's real GDP sank by 7.3 percent during the same period. During the financial year 2021-22, the state GSTP at constant prices demonstrate a year on year growth 9%, 91%. For the last 13 years, for the last three years, my government has been making relentless effort in ensuring decentralized and inclusive governance. In coherence with the objective of decentralized good governance, we have embarked upon restructuring of districts. My government has decided to restructure the existing 13 districts in the state to 26. This new district administrative setup shall start functioning on the auspicious day of Ugadi Telugu New Year, 2nd April 2022. We are our commitment to the welfare of the government employees who are regarded as the pillars of our administration. My government has implemented the 11th Pay Division Commission to the government employees and pensioners of the state with the treatment of 23% and flurry of other benefits including the release of five installments of general surrounds in one go and increasing age limit for the retirement from 60 years to 62 years. This is despite continued financial stress on the government exercise due to shortfall in the resources primarily because of COVID-19. This bears treatment to our commitment to employ economy. COVID-19 pandemic had a deleterious fiscal impact while revenues were constrained. On the hand, the expenditure had to be stepped up for COVID-19 mitigation measures, protection of livelihood, 
and ensuring the development did not get greater on the other. After the subdued growth reached last year, the state economy is projected to bounce back to pre-COVID levels. The advanced estimates of state economy for the year 2022 show the overall growth at 16.82 percent at current prices. The per capita income has moved up to 2,4778 from rupees 1,76,707 last year with a high impressive growth rate of 15.87 percent. Local global making Navaratnalu with STDs and localization. Amidst the persisting threat of the pandemic, our steadfast commitment to extending support to welfare of the farmers, women, children, unprivileged, marginalized and vulnerable groups continued. Our focus remains on the high standards for education, health, agriculture, women empowerment and inclusive governance. The elaborate inclusive model of governance we have adopted under Navaratna to improve the lives of our citizens is improving holistic and merits replication by other states. We have implicitly adopted the UNS Sustainable Development Goals broad agenda of leave no one behind under the Navaratna framework wherein all the SDGs have been mapped into the state welfare schemes that are implemented on a efficient basis. Through localization of SDGs, my government is ensuring that human and economic development takes place in a harmony with the environment. The effective implementation of integrated welfare program has been facilitated by the transparent and objective mechanism of directly transferring the financial assistance into the bank account of the beneficiary without in leakages and thereby significantly improve the lives of our citizens. 